Hey, Math 20-2s. Today we're going to look at proving angle relationships. First, we're going to construct some parallel lines. All right, so you are going to need a protractor, a ruler, and a compass. Big instrument we really need is this compass. If you haven't got one, you can ask one to get one from your teacher. All right, so constructing parallel lines. The objective is to construct a line parallel to a given line using only a straight edge and a compass. Use the following procedure to construct two parallel lines. So draw the first line and mark it point A on the line. Excellent. Second, draw a second line intersecting the first line at A and mark a point B on the second line. So here's our second line. All right, mark a point B on that. We're going to construct a line through point B that's going to be parallel to our first line. So remember, the line that contains A is our first line. So using the compass, construct an arc centered at A that intersects the two lines at C and D. All right, so we're just going to use our compass and draw that arc. And right now we're just going to follow along and we'll, we'll try with the first example here. Don't change the radius of this compass. So whatever radius we use to draw that arc, we are now going to center it um, at point B. And we're going to use that compass and draw the exact same arc right there. All right. Put the point of your compass at C now and measure the, the length from C to D. All right. Keep this radius of your compass and put that point that was on C, put that point on E, and then you will draw this arc. All right. It's going to intersect through arc that goes through BF, and now we can draw a parallel line right through the points B and F. So this line here is parallel to our original line. All right. So now that they're parallel, we could put arrows on there partway through the line to show that they're parallel lines. How are the measures of angles CAD and EBF related? CAD is this angle right here, and EBF is this angle here. How are they related? Well, those two angles are equal. Why are they equal? All right, that's question two. What kind of angles are formed? CAD and EBF, well, if you recall from last lesson, they form that F pattern, right? So anything that forms the F pattern, they're called corresponding angles. All right. The lines are parallel because the corresponding angles formed by the transversals are equal. So if you measure these two angles, they're equal. Here's our transversal. Because those two angles are equal their corresponding angles, these two lines must be parallel. All right. Now, if you go over to the next page, example one, it wants us to do this construction. The exact same thing. So they did, laid out all the steps for you on the previous page. We're going to do it now. All right. Use a ruler and a straight edge, construct uh, the line through P parallel to Q. Ruler and straight edge, we're going to use a compass as well. All right. So, step one, let's follow along and do exactly what it says here. First line, we want to mark a point on this line, anywhere we like. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter where you mark it. I'm going to mark it right here. And I'll call this point M. I'm now going to draw a line through M and P. All right. So, let's draw a second line through M and P. And because I used that blue color, I'm going to make that line blue. Well, I thought it was. All right. Either way. Uh, step three says, use a compass, construct an arc centered at um, M and Make sure it goes through both lines, QR and the new line we just drew. So let's get our compass out. So centered at 
Okay, so we've got the compass set up where we want. Let's extend the compass. So it's going to cut through both lines. And let's draw an arc like it asks us to do. So now that we've intersected these two lines, they want us to label these points. Let's call this point C and point D like it says in the instructions. All right. Now don't change the radius of this compass. And using the same radius as in the previous step, construct a second arc centered at point uh, P on the line here. And make sure it intersects that line at a further point. So let's move our compass down to point P on this line. All right. So point P is on that line. And we've kept the radius the same. So all we have to do now is make sure we draw an arc that intersects that line. And we'll label that point. And they want us to call that point E. All right. Great. Part five now asks us uh, to put the point of your compass at C and measure the distance and the pencil at D. All right, so let's see if we can do that. Point of our compass at C. And let's measure. Um, I have to rotate this a bit. There we go. Point at C and the pencil at D. There we go. Okay, now that point D actually should be right here on the line, so we want to make this, move it in just a hair. There we go. Excellent. Keeping this radius of our compass now, uh, put the point on E and draw a third arc that intersects our second arc. So keeping this um, radius, put the point at the line, point on the line here. On E, I guess I gotta move this down. So put the point of the compass at E, and let's draw another arc that intersects this one. Nice. All right. And now what it tells us to do is we can mark that point. They call it F, so this point here should be point F. And now we should use our ruler and draw a line that goes through P and F. All right. And that line, if things work out, should be parallel to the original line we had, which was line QR. Okay. So if we've done it correctly, these two lines should be parallel. All right. You could use a compass and measure that and see if that's true. But that works out nicely. All right. All right. Let's now look about, um, look at some more reasoning skills here. So in the last unit, we talked about inductive and deductive reasoning. Inductive, we used a bunch of examples to make conjectures. Deductive reasoning in, involves taking known relationships to prove new relationships. So in the last lesson, we used inductive reasoning um, in the class examples. In the assignment, we will use deductive reasoning to prove new relationships. All right. So we're going to use the following proven facts. Angles on one side of a straight line are supplementary, meaning they add up to 180 degrees. We're going to use that proven fact in some deductive proofs. Vertically opposite angles are equal, so we know that. And if two parallel lines are intersected by a transversal, corresponding angles are equal. So we're going to use these three proven facts to prove that alternate angles are equal. All right. So consider the diagram shown on the right. Angle 1 and angle 7 are alternate interior angles. They form the Z-shaped pattern. All right. We can see it. There's our Z-shaped pattern. Okay. We need to prove that angle 1 equals angle 7. We have to prove they're equal. So we'll complete the following two-column proof. When we're doing a two-column proof, the left column are statements we're making. 
The right column is a reason why we can make it. So the left statement says angle 1 equals angle 3. So angle 1 equals angle 3. Why can we make that statement? Well, because those are vertically opposite angles, and we know vertically opposite angles are equal. Now it also says angle 3 equals angle 7. So angle 3 equals angle 7. Why can we make that statement? What reason is there for us to make that statement? Well, we know that those are corresponding angles. They form the F pattern. And we've already proven that to be true. So 3 equals 7. Based on the statements, if 1 equals 3 and 3 equals 7, then angle 1 must equal angle 7 because they both equal angle 3. So that's the reason we can say that. It's called the transitive property. We can say we did a bit of substitution. Sometimes you'll see that. We did some substitution there to make that true. Substitution. Right? If angle 1 equals angle 3, then where I see angle 3 here, I can plug in angle 1. So angle 1 equals 7. Therefore, alternate angles are equal. So you've got your two-column proof. The left column is your statement. The right column is the reason why it's true. At the end, you should prove what you're asked to prove. Let's look at example two here. Complete the following two-column proof to prove that the co-interior angles are supplementary. So we need to prove that angle one plus angle four adds up to 180 degrees. That's what we're trying to prove. The left side of our two-column proof are, is our statements. The first statement says angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 180 degrees. So 1 plus 2 is 180. Why can I make that statement? Because they're along a straight line or they're a straight angle. And we know any angles along a straight angle must have a sum of 180 or they must be supplementary. All right. Now it says angle 2 equals angle 4. How can angle 2 equal angle 4? How can that be? Well, we call those alternate interior angles because they make the Z pattern. Right, they form that Z pattern. And we just proved in, uh, in our notes last time that that's true. So if 1 and 2 are supplementary, they add to 180, and 2 equals 4, well, I can do the substitution and say that angle 1 plus angle 4 has to equal 180 degrees. Right? So everywhere I had the 2 here, I'm plugging angle 4 in for angle 2 because it is equal to angle 4. If that's the case, then 1 plus 4 is 180. The reason I can do that, I did some substitution. You could call it the transitive property. And now that I've made that statement, I've secured my proof. Angle 1 plus angle 4 is 100 degrees. Every statement I made has a reason that is valid. All right. You guys have questions 1 through 8. Away you go.